Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie and this is baby week. I'm so excited you're here. This is the fourth video in this series and um, this one's gonna be all about things that we do not buy. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. You may want to check out the other videos from Baby Week. Um, I did show you some. Um, we went shopping on the first day. That was so fun. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to share with you guys what we bought, so stay tuned for that. Um, I also talked about things we regretted buying over the years. We have six kids. This is baby seven. She's coming around Thanksgiving, um, give or take. And over the years, we have grown as parents. We have become more experienced. We have been parents for over 10 years now. And there's lots of things that we have learned along the way and things that we regretted purchasing. So I talked about those in one of our videos. And I also shared with you what our very favorite, um, most practical, most useful items have been as well. So you can check out those videos also. But today's video is all about things that we just absolutely don't buy. We don't use them. They're not necessary. They're not practical. They're just not things that we purchase um, for our children or in our home. Because we already have six kids, we um, kind of have it down to a system. We It's not new for us to have a baby in the home. Um, there's lots of things that we don't want to spend money on or don't need to spend money on because just because the world tells you to. And the baby world is a huge money-making market. However, most of those items you do not actually need or you probably already have something that works and does the same purpose. So I'm going to talk about that today. Um, the first one, which is something that we actually didn't buy, but we almost bought with our first baby, and that was a wipes warmer. Um, we had several people that told us, you absolutely have to have a wipes warmer for your baby because they cannot have cold wipes on their hiney. Um, and we believe that. We wanted to be known as a good parents. We didn't want somebody um, to think otherwise of us. So we absolutely were like, yes, we need the wipes warmer. Um, for one reason or another, we did not purchase it. It is not necessary. It is not needed. I'm so glad we did not purchase it. I think it's, I don't know, um, but I feel like it's around 30 or $40. Um, but it is an unnecessary, impractical expense. So it is not something that we purchase. Okay, another one that I have actually talked about in another, I talked about this in our regrets video, is baby toys. We do not buy our children baby toys. Um, I'm talking about toys specifically made for children who are unable or um, un, I guess unable to comprehend how to use a toy. Um, so younger than toddlers, basically. We do not buy them toys. Um, we have things around the house because we have lots of other kids that they play with. Um, but the baby toys specific to babies are really never used. Um, occasionally they may play with one just because it happens to be in the car seat with them. Um, but it's not something that the baby is sitting there thinking, gosh, I really wish I had a toy right now. <laughs> and honestly, um, there's so many other things that serve the same purpose that the baby is just as interested in touching and holding and chewing on. Like I talked about these in our other video, but just a plastic bowl, um, from your kitchen. Uh, there's just so many things like the Duplos, the bigger Duplos, just one of those. They just think that's fun too. Um, so maybe one toy if you really just don't have anything else. But I do not think we need to have or spend money on a whole slew of baby toys, which is what we did in the beginning because we did not know any better. Okay, the next one is... Um, they make now like a special mat that is kind of fluffy and fun and beautiful. They're always beautiful um, for the baby to sit on or lay on when they're on the floor, like doing tummy time and things. Um, they're not terribly expensive, I don't think. However, in our home, we found it just as useful and just as beneficial 
and more practical to just use one of their blankets. Um, the blanket they can use afterwards, the mat they cannot, um, the blanket they can use like to cover up with later when they're a little bigger. Um, they're obviously not going to cover up with a thick little fluffy mat. So um, in our home, it's an impractical purchase. It's not one that we have made or plan to make, but I will say they are very tempting because they are always very beautiful. But then I go back to how are you going to store that? What is the purpose of it? What I mean, if you are just going to use it for a couple months, is it really necessary that we purchase it? Um, which brings me to another thing. Anything, pretty much anything that they are just using for a couple months that is either costly or um, large and hard to store later is probably an impractical purchase. Okay, the next one that we actually don't use is a baby tub. I talked about this in our favorites video just yesterday. Um, we have used the duck tub in the past because it's easy to store. We also have had the blue newborn tub that everybody has um, with the newborn sling. We had that in the very, very beginning. But then we realized how challenging that was to store. And as we have grown as parents, um, we have found it just as easy to hold the baby securely in the shower while we shower as well and then hand the baby to my husband or vice versa and it works just as well if not better. I have never been a mom who really wanted to bathe the baby in the sink. Um, to me that was harder to balance them and um, just all the things than just holding them securely against me and bathing them. And it doesn't take them long, their bodies are tiny, so it doesn't take but just about three minutes to bathe them and then hand them back to my husband and he can dress them while I continue my own shower. So um, that has been the way we have grown as parents. It has been very successful. Um, I will say babies can be slippery, so you do wanna make sure you're holding them securely. Um, so, you know, there is that, but it has never been an issue for us. It has always been a beautiful, loving, bonding experience in our home and um, one that we have enjoyed. So that is the way we have grown as parents. And um, we don't actually use a special tub just for the baby. Okay, if you look in our regrets video, you will see lots of other things that we have purchased that we no longer use or no longer um, buy in, in our present days. Um, so there are other items that are not on this list today, but one of the next ones is the baby robe. I talked about in the regrets video about the special towels just for baby and how um, impractical it is to have a special towel just for your baby instead of just using the towels that the entire family uses anyways and that they can grow up using, they won't grow out of. Um, the robe is the same thing. I don't understand what you're doing from the time you dry the baby off out of the bath till the time you put their pajamas on that they needed a robe in between, okay? So the robe for us is a very impractical purchase. It's not something that makes sense to me. Um, it's not something that I have ever purchased or that we have ever said, oh man, if we just had a robe, this would be so much better. Um, the towel works. And after they're not in the towel, they're in their pajamas. So there's, in our home, there's no transition period where a robe was necessary. Okay, let's talk about the potty chair. When you're potty training your baby, everybody tells you to get the special baby potty chair. Um, the special chair that sits beside the potty. However, in our home and the way we have always potty trained children, and potty training is not my favorite, but the way we have always potty trained our children is not using a potty chair. We just use the special little seat insert that goes on top of the regular potty and has a little hook where you can hang it beside the potty when they're not using it. Um, that is what we have always used. It's smaller, it's more practical, and it makes more sense for them as they learn to transition from diapers to, to using the toilet. Because if you go to someone else's house and they've been trained to use this small little potty chair, well now they, they may, may not have that available. So now you have to take it with you. 
or if they go like to a store or somewhere else, you have to take that with you. Um, I do know families that do that. They enjoy having that potty seat in the back of their car as a kind of a backup um, potty because sometimes the little ones don't always know in advance that they need to go potty. So it's fun to just pull over and use what you've got or a park. Um, like if the park doesn't have a bathroom or something like that, I can kind of see that as being useful. But as far as just in your home, a second small tiny potty, it just feels gross to me. Um, we have cloth diapered many of our children in the past. We are not currently cloth diapering, but we have in the past, we cloth diapered our first four babies. And um, to me, cloth diapering was less gross than the potty chair. I don't know, is that me? Just me? Maybe just me. Because we had a sprayer that went on the potty and it was just easier to spray it down. But the actual potty seat is so big and bulky that I imagine you have to, I don't know how you get all that out. I, I guess, cause I don't know, Does it, it doesn't really fit in your bathroom sink. So you probably have to take it to the kitchen. Do you shake it out in the potty? I don't know. It just feels gross to me and impractical and it's more expensive it takes up more space um it's more to store when you're not no longer using it than just the little insert that goes right on top and they transition from the insert to the same potty that they were already going to use as an adult so um i don't know we don't use potty chairs okay so something that is really popular right now is the nugget it's a climbing it's a climbing thing it's a a bunch of pieces of furniture that come apart and can be rebuilt and put together in different manners um, for the child to climb on, okay? Not only is it huge and um, takes up a lot of space, but if you've researched these, they're all the rave right now in the mom groups, by the way, which is what I talked about in the regrets video. Anything that is overly hyped is probably not necessary, but they are all the rave right now. And not only that, they are incredibly expensive, incredibly expensive for the amount of time that your child will probably use it. Um, I've heard of lots of families with their wonderful, beautiful success stories of this. We use this from when they were crawling and now they're four and five years old and they build forts out of it. It's so fun and da, 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 da. And I guess, I guess um, if you have a lot of money, and you have a lot of space, a very big house where you could store this and have maybe a special room set up for this and all of those things. Um, we just don't have that. We um, have eight people in our home. We're about to have a ninth person in our home. And for us, it is not a necessary or practical expense or a necessary or practical thing to store. So it is not something that I would recommend or anything that I would purchase for our own family. Okay, let's talk about feeding the baby, okay? Once the baby's big enough for food. And we do homemade baby food. And um, we have always done homemade baby food. And there is a huge market for that. People, the manufacturers know that moms want to have the best for their baby and that they know that homemade baby food is very good for their baby. So they, of course, are going to develop all the products that you must buy to, um, to, you know, nutrition, give your child good nutrition and fulfill their wonderful experience in this baby feeding time. And they're going to want you to buy all the things. So things that we do not buy. I am not buying expensive or specialty made baby items for feeding. Um, we do buy special plates for our babies, but not expensive ones like the pack uh, that's $3 for a set of seven of them or something like that. That's the one we buy, like the Munchkin brand, we'll buy those. The Ikea ones, okay. But um, specialty items, special spoons with little holes in them or a bowl just for mashing up baby's food because for some reason the bowls you have already and a fork or a potato masher don't work. I don't know. Um, you already have these tools in your kitchen. They will work for your baby as well. So I don't understand the um, 
hype or the drive to purchase these items. Uh, again, the special baby food making um, blender that you hear everybody has to have. And your regular blender works just fine. We've had six kids that have you and I have used the regular blender with every one of them and it works just fine. Um, I've heard people who love it because, oh, it's small size, but really? And besides, if you're going to have to make baby food, why don't you make a lot of it at once, <laughs> you know? Um, and honestly, if you're planning to make a lot at once and you're wanting to freeze it, you don't need these special um, baby food containers for freezing. You can just use an ice cube tray and freeze it in the ice cube tray with plastic wrap and then foil on top of that and pop it in the freezer uh, the next day or a few days later, pull it out and throw those ice cubes that are full of food or whatever um, into a baggie and label the baggie and move on and they will defrost and be fine. Um, as we've had more children, and this has actually not been an issue because we've done more like baby led weeding, weaning and um, we just give them the food that we're already gonna eat um, that, you know, off of like whatever the meal is that I'm making and I just don't season theirs as much or I um, just mash it more just on their plate. Um, it's not It's not a big production and it doesn't need to be. And the, of course, everything that is new, um, manufacturers know that moms will buy. So they do make it expensive and they do try to make it more than it needs to be. But we don't buy those. We just use the most practical things that we have, the tools we already have in our kitchen, like our blenders, our mashers, our regular bowls, just all the things. Um, we do, like I said, buy plastic plates and things for our kids. But we're not spending a ton of money. We're not buying the suction, special suction plates so they don't throw it on the floor. If they throw it on the floor, then we've learned a lesson. Um, the baby has learned not to do that uh, again. Or sometimes we just don't even give them the plate. We just wash the table and let them eat right there. And it's perfectly fine if they're too young to comprehend the, the plate concept. So um, it hasn't been an issue. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video about things we do not buy for our babies. Um, I hope that you had time to check out the other videos as well. And I look forward to sharing with you guys the purchases that we made from our first video on Monday. I wanna share with you guys what we purchased for this new baby. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Like I said, I'm Laura Wilkie, I'm a homeschool mom. I have six kids, one more on the way, and I will see you guys next time.